Hello everyone. Today we are learning about rhythm and particularly the quarter note and the eighth notes. I bet some of you have learned about this already with your music teacher at your school. If you are in my classes, we have learned about this before. So we're going to do a review or if you've never learned about it, I'll teach you a little bit about quarter notes and eighth notes. So these are called rhythms. I bet you've heard the word rhythm before. So these are rhythms of music. So I'm going to show you what a quarter note and an eighth note look like. All right, can you see the board okay? So here is what a quarter note looks like. It has a filled in note head. It's all colored in. See it there? And it has a stem that goes off the side. That is a quarter note. And then an eighth note kind of looks similar, but I want you to see if you can spot the difference. See if you can spot the difference between the quarter note and the eighth notes. If you look at half the eighth note, it kind of looks like a quarter note, but what do you notice at the top? We call this a beam, a beam that connects the two eighth notes together. If you have an eighth note by itself, this is just a bonus, look at its little droopy flag. Oh, let me adjust so you can see. Look at that little droopy flag. He's so sad. He doesn't have his buddy. He doesn't have his buddy, so his little beam is droopy down to the side because he's so sad he doesn't have his buddy. All right, so I'm gonna erase the single eighth note, and we're just gonna talk about the two eighth notes together and the quarter note. I'll write for those of you that like to read. Sometimes you like to read the words on the board. So this is the quarter, the quarter note, and these are the eighth notes. Eighth notes, so quarter and eighth. All right, so, we count these rhythms in a certain way. Ta for the quarter note, ta, and tt for the eighth note. Tt for the eighth note. So I'll write, I got my fall colors here. I will write ta and tt to help us remember. Ta, tt. Ta, tt. Can you see that in the orange there? Ta, tt. So what do we say for the quarter note? We say ta, and what do we say for the eighth note? Tt. Okay, so I bet you're wondering what this has to do with our lesson today. Well, welcome to your Thanksgiving lesson. So we're gonna do a little activity together, and we're gonna think of all different things that we might see at Thanksgiving, or we might eat at Thanksgiving. Um, or maybe it's part of the original Thanksgiving story. You know, the ones with the pilgrims and the Native Americans and the Mayflower, that story. I bet most of you have heard that story before. So our activity is gonna take Thanksgiving things and combine it with our rhythms, ta and tt. Now, if you are older, I'm gonna have a little separate rhythm to also help you when you get to your play along rhythms at the bottom of the lesson. You'll need to know what this separate rhythm is. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna erase um, our ta and tt for a moment. And I'm gonna make them smaller at the top of the board, okay? So I'm gonna keep them up here so you can see them, but we're just gonna make them smaller. So here's our ta quarter note, and here's our TT, eighth notes, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna take my fall colors here, and we're gonna use all different colors because I like a colorful board, and we're gonna write some different things that you might have to eat on Thanksgiving or you might um, think about when you think of Thanksgiving. So the first thing I'm gonna write is the most obvious one, of course, Turkey, turkey. Make sure you can still see it, okay. Turkey. Now, 
To help us find the rhythm of the word turkey, we're gonna have to clap the syllables. Most of us have learned about syllables before. Turkey, how many syllables does it have? Two, turkey. So, which note up here has two? The eighth note, turkey. So we're gonna put the eighth note with the word turkey. So these eighth notes go with the word turkey. Okay, what about corn? Corn goes with our Thanksgiving meal. It also goes with the first story of Thanksgiving when the Native Americans shared their corn and showed the pilgrims how to grow corn. So I'm gonna write the word corn up here. Now, how many syllables does corn have? Corn, one. Which note up here is just one sound? The quarter note, ta, right? Corn, they both have one sound. So I'm gonna put the quarter note with the word corn. All right. Hmm, what's another good color I have? Oh, I have an orange up here. What about pumpkin? I love pumpkin. I love pumpkin pie to be specific. So I'm gonna write the word pumpkin. Pumpkin. Hmm, let's put it here. Pumpkin. Now how many sounds or how many syllables does the word lower that down a little bit. Does the word pumpkin have? Pumpkin. Two. Good job. Two. Pumpkin. So which one has two sounds? Ta or tee tee? Tee tee has two sounds. Pumpkin has two sounds. So I'm going to put tee tee with the word pumpkin. All right, let's do... Um, Maybe two more? Let's do two more together. I'm having trouble with my paper staying up there. All right, um, let's see. Let's do a, another red one. All right, what about leaf? Because in fall and around Thanksgiving, the leaves change to beautiful colors, like red and yellow and um, well, some still stay green, but <laughs> we also get beautiful colors, oranges. Anyway, the word leaf. How many sounds does the word leaf have? Leaf. It has one sound, just like our quarter note, leaf. So leaf gets a quarter note. All right, let's do the last one. We talked about pumpkin. And I like, I said that I like it when it's a pumpkin pie, but there's all kinds of pies at Thanksgiving. There's apple pie and pumpkin pie, pecan pie. There's all kinds of pies. So let's just put the word pie up here. Pie. How many sounds does the word pie have? One, one syllable, pie. So it goes with our ta quarter note. So I'm gonna put my quarter note here. Okay, so these are actually some of the same examples that are on your worksheet. You should have this at home with you or in front of you, um, whether it's on your computer or you printed it off. So that's how you do this top part, right up here. And then it even has an open box here that you can make up your own word. Now it has to be one or two syllables, but you can make up your own word that goes with Thanksgiving that has one or two syllables. And you could put it, a draw a picture of it there in the empty box and then put the quarter note or the eighth note below it. So look right here, we did corn together. So you would write your quarter note underneath the word corn. We did turkey together. So you would write your eighth notes under the word turkey. We did pumpkin together. Look, it's right down here. What note did we put with it? The eighth note, because it has two sounds. So you would write your eighth note there at 
the bottom. We did pi together. How many sounds does pi have? One syllable, right? So one sound for our quarter note. So you would write your quarter note there. And I'll do the, I'll show you the last one. We did leaf together. Leaf and it has one sound. So it's a ta, it's a quarter note. And so you would just finish the ones that we did not do together and you would make up your own. And then we will do the bottom part. Now, the bottom part's kind of fun because you get to put all these together and you get to make a song. So you're composing your own song together. So it's in four, four time, which means we get to put four beats in a measure. Okay, so these little bar lines here, they separate our measures. So we get four beats in each measure. So you would look up here and you would say, okay, hmm, what should I do first? Oh, let's do corn first. So I would take, because corn is a quarter note, I would write the quarter note right here in the first little blank. And then maybe I wanted to do turkey next. Corn, turkey. Well, turkey has an eighth note. So then I would write an eighth note in the next block. Your directions are here. If you forget what I said, you can always go back and read the directions. Um, so yes, you can either write, number two on the directions say write in the corresponding Thanksgiving words for each rhythm you wrote to complete your rap. So after you write your note on the line, you're gonna write the word corn underneath it. Now. You have to have small handwriting to fit it underneath that tiny line. So you can't write with your huge big letters. You gotta write with your small tiny baby letters, okay? So you'll put your little word corn right under there. And then you would put your little word turkey under the second one. So hopefully that helps you know how to complete our Thanksgiving composition, rhythm composition and you learned a little bit about quarter notes and eighth notes. Now, if you are in third through fifth grade, I've given you a little more challenging option. So you'll complete this just like everyone else, but on your rhythms that you get to play along with uh, after you do this, I've linked some videos there. Um, there's a couple extra notes that you're gonna need to know what they are. So I'm gonna erase this all right, and we need to know two other notes so that you know how to do your play along. So this is, if you're in kindergarten, first or second grade, you can stop the video here. If you are in third, fourth or fifth grade, keep watching for just a minute longer. All right, so we already know our quarter notes and our eighth notes. Okay, so I'm gonna put those back up here. Quarter notes, eighth notes, but we also need to know our quarter rest, our quarter rest. Have you ever seen this in music before? Most of my students say, that just looks like a squiggly line. <laughs> and it kind of is. Um, I call it a stretched out Z with a little C attached to it. But this is a quarter rest. On a rest, we are silent. We don't make any noises with our instruments. We don't sing with our voices. Anytime you see a rest, it's silent. So when I'm playing along with a rhythm, um, I will bounce my hand out wide once I get to the rest. So let me show you what I mean. Ta, ti, ti. So did you notice how on the rest, I just, it's still a beat, but it's a beat of silence. Something special about all three of these notes, they are each worth one beat. So a quarter note is worth one beat. When you put two eighth notes together, they are worth one beat. And a quarter rest is still worth one beat, okay? It's still worth a beat, but it's a beat of silence, not a beat of sound. So ta and ti ti, they are a beat of sound. This is a beat of silence. 
lot of people get confused on that. So I just wanted to clarify. All right, and your last thing you need to know is a new note and it's called a half note, a half note. So it looks a lot like a quarter note, but do you notice the difference? It's open. It's not filled in at the bottom, okay? This is a half note. Now, lots of people like to think, well, that must be worth half a beat. Well, actually, it's worth half of the measure in 4-4 four, four time. So 4-4 four, four time means there's four beats in a measure. What is half of four? Two. So the half note takes up half the measure. So how many beats do you think it's worth? Two beats. So a half note is worth two beats. Now, if we were making this a measure, there would be too many beats in this measure because we have one plus one plus one. That's three plus two, four, five, right? So that's not, that's too many beats for a four, four measure. So if you have a half note, it would, we would have to take away one of these beats so that it wouldn't be too many beats in the measure. So this would be beat one, beat two, then on beat three, we would have our half note and it would carry over to beat four. And then that would be the end of our measure. Because remember, this is worth two beats. So it carries over. So you have two full beats that it takes up half the measure, right? So if we were clapping this measure, it would be ta, ti, ti, ta. See how I carried that beat over to the last to beat four, so it'd be ta, ti, ti, ta. All right, hopefully that helps when you are doing your rhythm play along. Go find you an instrument, complete that worksheet first. Then go find you an instrument, you can use sticks, you can use literal like tree sticks, you could use drumsticks, you could use a plastic tub as a drum. Go find you an instrument, homemade or maybe you have real instruments, and then play some of these videos and you can practice all of those rhythms that we just learned. Good luck.